And let's go now to the third architect that we pay homage to today. Uh, we descend a little bit on the spiral of time and we go to one of the visionary architects uh, of um, France. And that is uh, Claude Nicolas Ledoux. What brings the, all these three people together today is the fact that, uh, you know, they are all associated, so to speak, with the 18th of November. And today is the, the 18th of November. So let's read a little bit about Claude Nicolas Ledoux. Usually he is known as being part of the, of the, of the he's in a uh, partner of Boulet, Ledoux and Boulet, the great visionary architects uh, of the, um, the 18th century, essentially. This was the man, um, what can we say? I can only envy him, not because of his wig, but because of the general attire, you know, uh, showing prestige and, uh, you know, uh, certain taste for a uh, romantic uh, attire, which uh, we kind of don't have these days. Claude Nicolas Ledoux, a big forehead, uh, showing, I would say, uh, probably appreciable mental uh, capabilities. Hello, Mr. Ledoux. So let's read about him. He died on the 18th of November. I guess of the three, only Gio Ponti was born on, on November 18th. Hans Meyer died on November 18th and Claude Nicolas Ledoux also died on November 18th, but in 1806. Was, was one of the earliest exponents of French neoclassical architecture. He used his knowledge of architectural theory to design not only domestic architecture, but also town planning, as a consequence of his visionary plan for the ideal city of Shaw, and we are going to see pictures, he became known as an utopian. His greatest, greatest works were funded by the French monarchy and came to be perceived as symbols of the ancient regime rather than utopia. So right in this text, which I took from Wikipedia, there is also some, some contradiction. On one hand, the ideal city of Shaw is, was considered utopian, but a few lines uh, further down, we read that it was, they were, his architecture was considered rather symbols or symbolic of the ancien regime, the old regime, rather than utopia. The French Revolution hampered his career. Much of his work was destroyed in the 19th century. In 1804, he published a collection of his designs under the title L'Architecture considérée sous le rapport de l'art, des mœurs et de la législation, architecture considered in relation to art, morals, and legislation. In this book, he took, this is not a common uh, uh, triad, you know, art, morals, and legislation. Not very often you would see art and legislation brought together. In this book, he took the opportunity of revising his earlier designs, making them more rigorously neoclassical and up to date. This revision has distorted an accurate assessment of his role in the evolution of neoclassical architecture. His most ambitious work was the uncompleted Royal Salt Works at Arc et Senon, an idealistic and visionary town showing many examples of architecture parlant, meaning a narrative architecture. Conversely, his works and commissions also included the more mundane and everyday architecture, such as approximately 60 elaborate toll gates around Paris in the world of the general tax farm. I don't know what the general tax farm is, but anyway, we are going to, some, to see some pictures. But now I remember the uh, short poem that Louis Kahn wrote when he was asked to write a foreword to a book or an exhibition or both of Ledoux and Boulet. And allow me to, 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 to uh, recite it to you. I don't uh, usually memorize poems, but this is short and this one I did memorize. It goes like this. So it was written by Louis Kahn. 
spirit in will to express can make the great sun seem small. The sun is thus the universe. Did we need Bach? Bach is thus music is. Did we need Le Do? Did we need Boulet? Le Do is, Boulet is, thus architecture is. Well, with these few words, Louis Kahn said a lot about his admiration for uh, Claude Nicolas Ledoux and uh, Etienne Boulet. So let's look at drawings. He drew a lot. And uh, you probably know some of these uh, eccentric uh, imaginings. I mean, even today, such buildings would look uh, audacious. That's why he's considered together with uh, Boulet uh, uh, um, you know, uh, visionary architect. Uh, he, he, he is less visionary, so to speak. He's more historicist, but in some works, uh, you can see some uh, truly almost alarming uh, imagination. He designed a lot, a lot of houses, and some of them indeed almost with cosmic uh, attributes or aspirations. We are going to see a few of them. So again, this is Claude Nicolas Ledoux, who died on November 18th, but in 1806. Look at this house, where uh, this this should be, this could be called even more appropriately, perhaps the falling water. Uh, more uh, more perhaps so than uh, the celebrated building by uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, this is. Uh, that you know, uh, he he built some of these buildings, and we are going to see them. Uh, this one you can see down the plan and the section through this extravagant building. Why is he called a visionary architect? Exactly because uh, some of his proposals transcend the limitations of a terrestrial life. They have, uh, you know, some I say the rhetorics of the building are, uh, you know, uh, transgressing, uh, you know, uh, common, uh, common interests or aspirations. Look at this, you know, uh, centrality, uh, formalism, but also, you know, living in a, or, or I, you know, not living, but uh, conceiving of a sphere which connects him with Boulet, this is indeed an idealistic, utopian, and somehow, you know, we could call it a cosmic, uh, cosmic architecture. Not all his buildings are like this, but look at this one. You know, it's, it's, it's a house with uh, four stairs leading, uh, you know, into a sphere. Even today, you know, uh, not too many people would, uh, you know, uh, by choice live within a sphere. This one we saw, but now we see the, 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 the plans. He was dreaming, of course, but I think we need, we need the dreams of the architects. You know, we need their imagination to manifest itself. And in this sense, Claude Nicolas Ledoux is an example. If he transcends time, is exactly because of, 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 of the somewhat uh, extravagant proposals that he made, uh, mainly through drawings. Uh, look at this little building here, and look at what he proposed. You know, it's it's an emphatic architecture, but it's an emphatic architecture which underlines in a way the the increased emphasis on uh, of, of water the the rhetorics of water the power of water which enters the building and exits the building as we see it here were these architects crazy no i don't think so they were just uh, uh, courageous in formulating architectural visions, which uh, yes, remained on paper, but I think they are important for the, the architectural thinking and also 
for the architectural eye and for stirring up the imagination of others. And you'll see one of his proposals was actually built uh, rather recently. Anyway, some, some works were conditioned by his time, yes, and they are historicist. We all arrive at this project. He published books. I mean, there are books that can be found. You can purchase them with his many, many drawings and many projects. Now, Ledoux's design for a house for pleasure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, it depends, you know, what we understand by pleasure, but uh, it's uh, the very title is interesting. A house for pleasure. What if we design today a house for pleasure? Now that there is a, a pandemic outside, you know, we could, uh, we could uh, use our imagination and uh, our skills to imagine ourselves, let's say, inspired by the work of Claude Nicolas Ledoux, we imagine a house for pleasure. Okay, it will remain on paper, but, you know, maybe it's not a uh, futile exercise. Uh, let's look again right here, you know, it's, uh, I don't know exactly what kind of functions he had here. But uh, the very idea to build the house of pleasure is kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, is it, was it intended for a king, for an emperor, for uh, the common man? I don't know. Common people? I don't know. Anyway, built works, Claude Nicolas Ledoux, Decoration of Café Militaire or the Café Godot on the Rue Saint-Honoré in Paris from 1762. I don't know if I have images I have. This remained, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, probably fragmented within a, within a museum. Uh, I don't know if it is a coffee, coffee now or not. Maybe it is. Well, we only see some fragments, you know, uh, of an ornamental nature showing, of course, uh, uh, what it meant to build in the 18th century in France before the revolution. The revolution which brought Egalité, Fraternité, Liberté. We don't employ any longer ornaments, but I think in, in the ornamental art, the architect has uh, a lot to offer. And uh, I understand the revolt of Adolf Loos and others against ornament, but now we, a, we are in a different century and perhaps, you know, Vita Contemplativa will uh, find in, in ornament some kind of a, a friend, so to speak. Anyway. Chateau de Maupertuis, Saint Emar. It was destroyed. I don't know if I have. I have. This is a rendering, but not done by Ledoux. Central, central building, a central building for a centralized society. Hotel du Président, Hocar, also in Paris. Also, just a rendering. It doesn't exist any longer. I think. Now another hotel. Also in Paris, it is the only private construction of Ledoux which remains in the capital, meaning in Paris. And here it is, an urban building, uh, you know, uh, maybe unexceptional, uh, but uh, anyway, it's one of his buildings that uh, survived the, the onslaught of time and man also. In Paris, there are many hotels like this. This is by uh, Claude Nicolas Ledoux.
anyway this is in french but uh, maybe not too many words are needed to accompany the pictures it is not easy when you have a very rich and almost exotic imagination when you try to implement your ideas of course there, there are distances between what you can build and what you imagine but it's okay even a project has its significance for architecture for the spirit of architecture and sometimes i mean there are architects like piranesi piranesi became hugely influential and significant exactly because of his drone architecture he built a little bit but not uh, significantly he is significant through his uh, graphic work and it's the same with uh, Ledoux, and even more with Boulet. Now, another hotel. Uh, it was destroyed in 1870. Uh, there are just, it's just this room somewhere, you know. It's, 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 it's an architecture or a decoration, decoration, uh, you know, for the end of the, of the 19th century, 18th century, sorry. Chateau de Benouville, uh, near Caen, property of this uh, 1768, <clears throat> 1769. <clears throat> now this is, uh, <laughs> you know a building well i don't, i don't think this kind of architecture defines le Doux as a major force in architecture especially in the field of what is called visionary architecture we are going to arrive at some buildings that um, that uh, take care of this aspect of his uh, of his work and his legacy well he built a lot but unfortunately many buildings were destroyed um but still some buildings remain and we are going to see them. This is one of them, maybe not the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, interesting. Another hotel reconstructed, but no pictures. Hotel of Mademoiselle uh, Guimard destroyed, but we have the rendering of the facade centrality of course when was it uh, made uh, it doesn't say the year anyway another house for mademoiselle saint germain in paris destroyed but we have this rendering who knows if it would have looked like this or if it looked like this. These are more recent uh, renderings, rather naively done anyway. Pavillon Saint Lambert destroyed, no picture, Pavillon d'Arty, Faubourg destroyed, Pavillon de Musique uh, for Mademoiselle du Barry, Lucien, this one exists. And Lucienne is a, is a little place, a little town near Paris. And here we see, yes, a sample, uh, maybe not, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, a decent, uh, dis yeah, a gentle uh, sample of uh, Ledoux's work. He has other kinds of works, and we are going to see them a little bit later. So what is this? It's a pavilion for music, for this uh, a person from 1770 to 1771, uh, Madame, Madame du Barry, not Mademoiselle, Madame, Madame du Barry. Lucien.
it appears smaller from the outside, but if you look at the plan, it's not really such a small, uh, a small building. Claude Nicolas Ledoux, Ledoux in uh, Lucien, near Paris. Okay, another hotel destroyed. The woodwork of the circular salon are preserved at the Boston. What is he doing in, in, in Boston? But that's what it is. And this is a, a rendering, a more recent rendering of, of, of the building which does not exist. Anyway, moving forward. Interesting plan though, you know, look at uh, this uh, spatial diagonal. Uh, rather unconventional. Almost Baroque, although he's considered a neoclassical architect. And indeed, was the outside the building, if you didn't have the, the eccentricity of those di that diagonal space, it would be a neoclassical building. But the plan shows some tension because of that diagonal of spaces, if I am to call it so, which are also curved rooms. Okay, now this is a major work by him, the Royal Salt Works at Arc et Senon from 1774 to 1779. And it is classified as monument historique monuments, historical monuments of France and the World Heritage Site of UNESCO in 1982. Uh, I like this architecture of Le Doux because it's both rural and urban somehow. And the massivity of these columns make me think of, uh, of the pre-Doric uh, architecture at Pestum in the south of Italy uh, is, um, is a, yes, it deserves to be, uh, you know, preserved properly uh, by the, the UNESCO heritage status that it has. And this is a, an utopian architecture, but somehow also connects with the, you know, with the monarchic uh, undertones. We are going to see this building in, uh, in, in more detail. I, I like those uh, robust uh, columns. So the windows are rather domestic because of this fragmentation in small squares, but the columns are indeed robust and public, if I am to call them so. These are, these are the columns of, uh, you know, of power, of force, of, um, you know, uh, authority almost, but with something uh, uh, rustic or uh, almost rural about them, the pre a certain urban primitiveness no, maybe less urban. I don't know very well how to express. I think they, they these columns are, um, you know, they are original and they are convincing exactly because he's not copying, you know, some columns from the past. He's creating something. And I like the fact that the, the fragmentation in this way, they, they become, uh, you know, less literal and less oppressive. They're interesting. It's an interesting work. And it's an interesting work, I think, because it, 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 it has this mixture between urban and rural. It's almost archetypal. 
here again, you know, it's, it's, it, there is culture, there is history, there is, uh, you know, uh, continuity, historical continuity and even tradition, but there is also innovation and nonconformism and the, and, the, and the tactility, the tectonics of the building uh, uh, give, give them, uh, give it or give them, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, a force. I, I, I like this architecture. I don't like the presence of this word Alami all over the picture, but what can we do? They make nice, they have nice pictures, but they destroy their own uh, uh, work with uh, this uh, alarming uh, need for, uh, you know, uh, authorship, so to speak. It's a great work by Ledoux. Uh, Ricardo Bofil and the Taller de Arquitectura tried to mimic some of his uh, aspirations in the new works, well, approximately new. Uh, we are still talking about another contemporary of ours, Ricardo Bofil, but I think uh, uh, Ledoux still uh, retains an authenticity which uh, Bofil uh, in his later works doesn't have in my opinion. Anyway. Maybe contemplating this work, we, we understand the words of Louis Kahn that I allow myself to recite uh, for you. Boulet is, le is, thus architecture is, or le is, Boulet is, thus architecture is. And he placed them in the vicinity of Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach is, thus music is. Le Du is, Boulet is, thus architecture is. And look at this, uh, you know, another interesting uh, part of this. Uh, this complex of buildings. I like this fact that he marries history with uh, rusticity, you know, in a way with a history. If he was a banal historicist, he would not have done what we look at now, nor here, but he was not a banal historicist. He was an inventor and a creator. Théâtre de, uh, de Besançon, 1778-1784, uh, he included an image, this is a famous uh, you know, rendering with a visionary eye of the architect. I myself took a part in an exhibition in New York called <clears throat> Portfolios in Architecture and uh, or Visions in Architecture. And uh, on the poster, there was employed this very image that uh, belongs to Claude Nicolas Ledoux. In a way, all architects who deserve their names as being architects know something about this eye the voracious eye of the architect, voracious for, uh, for architecture, for the pleasure of doing architecture, for the pleasure of inventing architecture, creating architecture, and hopefully uh, building architecture. Although to talk about building architecture today, uh, let's hope we can build without uh, provoking nature uh, in a more alarming ways. These columns are emphatic, but they do have power. I do understand why Paul Prix was and is against columns in general, but some of the columns of Ledoux uh, are not uh, expressions of a bourgeois 
desire for uh, you know uh, dominance but they have a telluric force they are they they represent they could represent a social or societal authority but they could also represent uh, you know they could be in their multiplication some kind of uh, uh, repetition of an axis mundi uh, vigorous and uh, even uh, uplifting somehow sometimes a theater in Besançon. Claude Nicolas Ledoux. Now a hotel destroyed in Paris from uh, 1778. These uh, renderings are rather pathetic, but they don't belong to him. I just included them in order to show even at this uh, rather rudimentary uh, level, some of his buildings, which do not exist any longer. Another hotel for Madame de Spinchal, uh, destroyed. We look at the plan. He uses the ellipse, and the ellipse is not truly a, a geometrical figure belonging to neoclassicism, rather to some mannerism or even Baroque. So, you know, between the circle and the two circles that generate the ellipse, there is some tension and rivalry. Parc de Bourneville, La Ferté Mion, uh, no pictures, Grenier, Cell. Uh, uh, Compiègne. Uh, here another interesting building by uh, by Ledoux, and I I do find it interesting. You know this uh, monumental arch, uh, you know which uh, almost alone, in fact alone, uh, you know uh, uh, breaks uh, the the opaque facade. There is a, a monumentality in Ledoux in his best works, which I think is inspiring. Yes, it is rhetorical, but um, it is inspiring exactly because of it. And uh, I don't think it is a superficial demagogical statement here, no. I think of the big holes in, let's say, the hospital in Bangladesh that uh, Louis Kahn built, and also in the, in the buildings belonging to the, uh, you know, political, uh, center of Dhaka. In this sense, yes, his architecture could be considered visionary or with some cosmic aspirations. Was it a need for this kind of, uh, you know, dramatic large scale uh, opening into the world? I don't know, but um, you look at the building on the left or on the right, or uh, we don't see what's going on. Uh, across the street but uh, it's still a you know a powerful opening into the into the world of the building and look here and somehow when you look at this rendering you think of, of the of the visionary eye the graphic work that we just looked at is as if the building uh, through that opening looks back to you it looks to you Claude Nicolas Ledoux. He died on the 18th of November, and that's why we talk of him today. Now, Siege de la Femme Générale in Paris. Let's see if we have pictures. Now, well, only uh, illustrations. Uh, a large institutional building, four square courtyards. Pavillon et Barrière de l'Autroi de Paris. Uh, here, uh, there are several buildings. It wasn't very clear to me if these were destroyed during the Second World War. There are some buildings by him, but uh, it, to me, it was not very clear. Maybe I need to further study his work. Let's look at what, what we have. 
This is a large building by uh, Claude Nicolas Ledoux, and it is indeed Claude Nicolas Ledoux. Uh, by now, we, we kind of know what we expect from him, although he is capable of uh, transgressing our expectations as well sometimes. It's in Paris and it exists, it stands. So late 19th, 18th century, early 19th century. Uh, I guess this building also suffered uh, during the war, but interesting, uh, interesting work nevertheless. And I guess he built all these buildings. Um, I don't know exactly, I should read again. I did read and I kind of forgot what the function of these buildings were. Maybe they were, it was a constellation of buildings kind of protecting the city. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, they are. Uh, Claude Nicolas Ledoux, here we see a building that very similar through its columns to what we already saw uh, outside of Paris. Another interesting one. The French culture is interesting because on one hand, it is uh, almost a romantic culture, uh, you know, initiating and advocating liberté, égalité, fraternité, liberty, freedom, I mean, freedom, uh, uh, the equality, and fraternity, but on the other hand, also has a very strong tradition of, uh, you know, uh, centralized power. And this can be seen in the in the the urban fabric of Paris, with all the boulevards and avenues converging towards Lac de Triomphe, and you have l'Hotel des Invalides. You have, you know, Versailles, of course, outside of Paris. You have the the, the 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 sun king so it's it, it, there, is, there are duality, dualities in the french spirit which perhaps uh, these very dualities make them uh, very interesting and and uh, and uh, prolific and uh, innovative in the field of culture so that's it for today thank you for being here <laughs>